Stadiums are houses for sports fans across the country and around the world to come together as one and watch their favorite teams play. However, some stadiums and arenas are only good for that team for a certain number of years and eventually, these incredible coliseums where our favorite sports are played will be left for dead and abandoned like Houston Texans fans' hopes and dreams. Those hopes and dreams are shadowed by the abandoned Astrodome next to NRG Stadium. However, the stadiums on this list are lesser known as they lie in a region as breathtaking and less talked about as other stadiums that meet the end of their life. In the South, there is nothing like high school football and these stadiums are as run down and destroyed as the region they sit abandoned in. Hey, what is going on guys? It is me, Peyton V, and today guys, I'm going to be showing you 10 abandoned high school football stadiums in my region. Some quick criteria for this video, the stadiums must be in Northeast Tennessee, Western Carolina, and Southwest Virginia. They have to have hosted high school football games at one point in their lives. They can be used for other activities today, but the purpose for these stadiums going on this list is that they were built for football, and football is no longer played on them. I will also be giving you the reason as to why these stadiums no longer host football on Friday nights. Disrepair and decay is a bonus. Let's get into it. Once the site of one of the most dominating football programs in Southwest Virginia football history, Riggs Stadium was once the home of the Appalachia High School Bulldogs. The Bulldogs were the third winningest football program in Virginia High School League history as of 2011. They won six state championships, their first being in 1971 coached by Jim Big Daddy Riggs, who would later have the stadium named after him when he retired. From 1989 to 1997, coach Tom Turner led the team to five state championships and cemented his legacy as the winningest coach in Appalachia football history. Some unique features of the stadium include the doghouse, which was the home football locker room, and was later renamed to the Turner Fieldhouse in honor of the legendary head coach, and the steps to victory, which Appalachia players would walk down every game to ACDC's Thunderstruck. So why was this stadium abandoned? 2010 was the last season the Bulldogs played on this field as in 2011, the school district consolidated Appalachia High School with their nearby rivals Powell Valley to create Union High School in Big Stone Gap. The stadium sat in pretty bad shape until in 2012 when the stadium was refurbished and the Union High School Bears played a football game there to celebrate the 15th year anniversary of the last Bulldogs state championship team. They would play two more football games in 2014 and one in 2019, however they haven't played football in Appalachia since then. The stadium is currently being used by the Union High School men's and women's soccer teams. However, this past May, a fight broke out at the stadium during a game between rival fans. Six people were charged and multiple people were injured. One had to be airlifted out by helicopter. Play never resumed. I wonder if you went there today you'd see someone's rotted teeth from 30 years of smoking lying on the ground. The old Appalachia High School classroom and auditorium buildings are scheduled for demolition in the summer of 2023. Located about four blocks away from downtown Wise, this stadium was definitely a beautiful place to watch a football game. Once the home of the J.J. Kelly High School Indians, this stadium was named after former Green Bay Packers wide receiver and Super Bowl champion Carol Dale. Many great stories have been told from games on this field, including what is widely regarded as the biggest upset in Southwest Virginia football history when the aforementioned Powell Valley Vikings came to town to take on J.J. Kelly in 1999 and were upset by the Indians 19-14. Powell Valley was on a 34-game win streak and was the number one team in Southwest Virginia at the time. Damn, that loss might have stung just as bad as the Miles Bridges case. The Indians do have a state championship in football, that being in 1981, but the school is mostly known for holding the Virginia High School League record for most state championships won by any school in baseball and girls tennis. In 2011, J.J. Kelly High School consolidated with a nearby high school up north, which we'll get to in a minute, to create Y Central High School. When the school was formed, they used the old J.J. Kelly High School building as well as Carroll Dale Stadium. So why was the stadium left to crumble? The Y Central Warriors left in 2014 for a new school and football stadium leaving the old J.J. Kelly High School facilities as a rotting eyesore of the back roads of Wise, Virginia. Youth games were played here for a few years, however in 2021, a demolition of the old school and stadium were proposed and the old J.J. Kelly High School building was fully demolished in 2022. 
The stadium, however, was partially demolished and is still there to this day. The old concession stands, scoreboard, and goalposts still remain as a reminder that great teams once played on this very field. Fun fact, I had no idea this stadium existed until about a month ago, and the sad part about that is, it's in my hometown. Opened in 1935, Roosevelt Memorial Stadium was Johnson City, Tennessee's place to watch the best high school athletes duke it out on the gridiron. The primary tenants at this stadium were the Science Hill High School Hilltoppers and the Langston High School Golden Tigers. Langston was one of the few all-African American schools in Northeast Tennessee during the 1960s. The stadium was also the site of the Burley Bowl football game, which highlighted an annual tobacco festival held in Johnson City from 1945 to 1956. Possibly the most famous player to ever play on this field was former Heisman Trophy winner and Florida and South Carolina head coach Steve Spurrier. The field was named after him in 1995. After desegregation, Langston High School students were sent to Science Hill High School in 1965. So what happened to such a great football venue? The Science Hill Hilltoppers moved to their new on-campus stadium in 2010, sealing the aging venue's fate. It was demolished that same year and the Memorial Park Community Center was built on top of it. The original stadium gate and the spirit of the American Doughboy statue were preserved and transformed into the Veterans Memorial Park of Johnson City. A Tennessee State historical marker is located where the front entrance of the stadium would have been. Nicknamed the Crown Jewel of Tazewell County, this stadium housed such a historic team that when it opened in 1955 with a new school, it instantly became a huge success in both attendance and ticket sales. Home of the Pocahontas High School Indians for 62 years, this stadium played host to some incredible Mountain Empire District football games. Although the Indians never won a state championship, the fans were rowdy, the games were well played, and the spirit of Pocahontas flowed through this stadium. In fact, the fans were so rowdy that often police would be called to the school multiple times for underage drinking as students lit bonfires before every single home game. So why was this stadium left to rot? Pocahontas High School closed its doors in 2008 and students were sent to nearby Taswell and Graham High Schools. Sections of the building were boarded up to veer away vandals and thieves. However, they still do hold alumni events here to this day in the school's auditorium named after former principal Gaza Kovach. As for the stadium itself, the old rotten bleachers still sit there today, the field in less than playable condition, the once great home of the Indians now rotting away like the rest of Pocahontas. It's unsure what will happen to the stadium now, though demolition is likely in order. Though this stadium plans to undergo renovations and open for athletics again by this fall, football most likely will never be played on this field ever again. Nicknamed Thunder Valley, Benny Compton Field was the home of the Sullivan North High School Golden Raiders. They were not necessarily the most flashiest of football teams. In fact, the Raiders never won a state championship in any sport, men or women's. That's pretty sad considering this school was around for over 40 years and played in the second lowest class of football in the state of Tennessee. When the pandemic hit in 2020, one player contracted the virus and the entire team had to self-quarantine, causing their first game of the year to be pushed back by one week. They would try their hardest all year long, but they went 0-10, losing every game in their last season as a high school. Makes a little more sense as to why they wanted to consolidate now. So what happened to Benny Compton Field? The last event to be held at the venue was the final Sullivan North High School graduation in 2021. Students were then sent to the newly built Westridge High School in nearby Bluntville. Since then, the stadium portion has sat abandoned and almost untouched. In fact, the social distancing stickers from 2020 are still located on every other row of seats on both the home and away grandstands. The field, however, is being taken care of as nearby Dobbins Bennett High School's lacrosse teams plan to play here in 2023. Fun fact, in 2022, the Buck Van Hus Dome on DB's campus had structural issues, so they decided to play their home games at the renovated Sullivan North Gymnasium and renamed it to the Tribe Athletic Complex. The school district has plans to turn Sullivan North into an elementary school by 2025.
the home of one of the more storybook Southwest Virginia football teams in the late 2000s and early 2010s, this stadium used to be a cornfield next to the Russell Fork River. In 1962, Sandlick Field was constructed and the Hayside High School Tigers occupied the venue. The Tigers won 19 Black Diamond District Championships and were head coached by James Cauley, who later returned to his alma mater in 1979 and took over as head coach in 1982. As head coach, he won 254 games, led the Tigers to the playoffs in 22 seasons, and is known throughout Southwest Virginia as an offensive mastermind, utilizing multiple formations. This offensive style resulted in several former Hayside players being included in the VHSL record book, including Jason Compton's career passing touchdown record of 87. Even though the Hayside football team had considerable success, that was not always the case, as between 1964 and in 1969, the team lost 43 consecutive games. So what happened to this stadium? In 2015, Hayside consolidated with their nearby rivals, which we'll get to in a minute, to create Ridgeview High School in Clintwood. Following the final home game at Sandlick Field, the stadium sat in severe disrepair and still does to this very day. It sits next to Sandlick Elementary School and is often used for field day and outdoor activities by the Sandlick School District. It is also often visited by alumni of the school's past, as Hayside High School was demolished in 2022. The last bit of Hayside Tiger history sits abandoned, rotting away. A stadium that most likely will never host a high school football game ever again. If a stadium was given the take it somewhere else treatment, this place would be the biggest recipient. Located in Boone, North Carolina, the old Jack Rowe Stadium sat directly underneath the former site of the old Watauga County High School. Before the stadium was built, the Watauga Pioneers played their home games at Appalachian State's Kid Brewer Stadium until 1994, when the university asked the team to build a new stadium closer to campus, and that's what they did. From what I've seen, it was a pretty crappy place to play, as the field often had holes in it, and players constantly tripped over the sprinkler systems located across the field. I wonder if Buffalo Wild Wings had a sponsorship with the school. The fans weren't even safe, as steel aluminum bleachers for a November playoff game in North Carolina is never a good combination. So why was the stadium left to the elements? The Pioneers moved to their new school and built a new stadium with the same name across town in 2011, leaving the old facilities to rot in the North Carolina rain and fog. A few years later, in 2012, the school building was torn down and the property was put up for sale by the city of Boone. In 2016, App State bought the property with plans to convert it into a brand new track and field facility, which construction began in 2021 and the facility opened in 2022. Just across the street from downtown Clintwood sits a high school and a stadium that was home to one of the best football programs in the state of Virginia in the late 2000s and early 2010s. Ralph Cummins Stadium was opened in 1955. It was the home of the Clintwood High School Green Wave for almost 60 years. The stadium was named after former head coach Ralph Cummins, who coached the Green Wave for 35 years, won 271 games, and went undefeated in the regular season 10 times. He also coached the Green Wave to three state championships from 1974 to 1978. Clintwood would once again win big in 2011 when former player Rick Mullins came back to coach the team after Ralph Cummins' retirement and led them to a state championship. Possibly the most famous player to ever step foot on this field was Justin Hamilton, who would go on to play in the NFL for the Cleveland Browns and the Washington Redskins before eventually moving on to a coaching career. Today, he is a defensive coordinator for the Tennessee Titans. So why was such a beloved stadium left to die? Clintwood High School consolidated with the aforementioned Hayside High School in 2015 to create a new school a few miles up the road. The school building and football stadium sat abandoned for many years. However, in 2022, Clintwood High School was demolished and parts of Ralph Cummins Stadium were also demolished. The locker room building of the stadium sits next to the field and has been taken care of since the school's closing. As of the release of this video, Ralph Cummins Stadium will have been almost fully demolished and will soon be turned into commercial or retail property. The old high school site is currently being planned to be the home of a new Food City grocery store, even though there's one like five minutes down the road.
So this is an example of what not to do when you abandon your high school and football stadium and have no plans on what to do with it afterwards. Dotson Mullins Field is located in Pound, Virginia and was the home of the Pound High School Wildcats. Opened in 1949, this stadium was beautiful, the fans were amazing, and the games were very well fought. The stadium was also the home of the Lonesome Pine District Baseball Championship game as it also doubled as the school's baseball diamond. The Wildcats were only able to make it to a football state championship once in 1999 and tragically lost to Surrey County 21-6. They never got the chance to go back, and in fact, the only state championships that were won by Pound were in boys tennis and in girls basketball. Fun fact, Glenn Roberts, the innovator of the jump shot in basketball, used to play for Pound High School. So why did this stadium close? The Pound Wildcats consolidated with the aforementioned J.J. Kelly High School Indians, and that fall, students were sent down south to the new school in Wise. The stadium would host youth games for a few years, but eventually, in 2015, the stadium was closed and condemned. Following this, the school would become hotspots for vandals, urban explorers, and even graffiti artists. In 2021, it was announced the school and stadium would be demolished, and a few months later, demo crews moved in to destroy all that was left of the old Pound High School and Dotson Mullins Field. All that's left of the old Pound High School is the state championship sign towards the front of the school, as well as the abandoned softball field and tennis courts which sit just above where the football stadium would have been. Seems like both the school and stadium would have been insane places to explore before they were destroyed though. And finally, the worst abandoned high school football stadium in my region. The satellite images of the stadium may look bad from above, but one thing is for sure. This place was a breathtaking place to watch a high school football game when it opened in 1955. For 66 years, the Irvington High School Rebels called this place home, and it was often regarded by opposing fans as a perfect venue that represented football well in Southwest Virginia. Alumni of the school's past said it was a magical place to come support their Rebels and watch them play hard-nosed football. However, over the years, the stadium became obsolete compared to the other venues on this list due to the decline of population in the town of Nora and the lack of student enrollment at Irvington High School. That's what ultimately doomed the place as Irvington High School was forced to close due to budget cuts in 2012 and students were sent to the aforementioned Haysai and Clintwood High Schools. The school and stadium sat abandoned and untouched by the county for many years, however, in 2016, Irvington High School and all the surrounding structures were demolished and nothing has been built on the site since then. These photos show all that's left of this once beloved home of one of the most beloved football programs in the county. A once promising and beautiful venue now nothing more than overgrown weeds and bushes. Football will never be played on this site ever again due to the local economy and the rundown state of the nearby communities. It gets even worse for the Irvington Rebels as the nearby Irvington Elementary School closed its doors this past May. The last line of Rebels to see the end of Irvington will not even be old enough to have the memories of Friday night high school football games under the lights in blue and yellow. It's a sad ending to a school that was loved by so many. This is easily the saddest high school football field I have ever seen. Well that does it for this video guys, thank you so much for watching, please make sure you guys hit the like and subscribe button. And also hit the bell so you guys get notified of every single time I upload a video. Also, leave a comment and let me know if you guys want to see me do the top 10 best high school football stadiums in my region. I will 100% make that video for you guys. Thank you all so much for tuning into this video and I will see you all in the next one. Peace out guys.